The green screen is really bad. Don't blame me. Hey, everyone. Welcome back to another One More Podcast podcast. My name is Yuval, and I'm here joined with my buddy, Blake. And uh, we have a wireless caller uh, across the land of Texas, and he is in the residential state of Austin, and his name is Cole. Hi. <laughs> Uh, and so today is going to be a little bit different. I uh, wanted to try out something new. Um, I was perusing the Reddits and everything like that. So came across a subreddit that is uh, about crazy ideas. And so this is a broad spectrum, nothing in particular. It can be about movies. It can be about law. It can be about music. You know, liter- literally anything um, that just people, you know, want to throw in and you know, some crazy ideas are actually smart and could be super cool, uh, and some crazy ideas are bad uh, and should never be discussed ever. Or so, said on the air. Or ever. said ever. Yep, exactly. <laughs> That's just, we need to bury, bury it down and <laughs> not uh, talk about it ever again. Anyways, so I figured we can go through a few. Uh, this is probably going to be a short one and, you know, just see how it is. I don't know. I figured it'd be kind of funny to talk about and maybe spin our own crazy ideas off of the crazy ideas. So... Uh, first crazy idea, which actually, uh, is not that crazy. I don't think, Mm-mm. um, you should give people paid time off during election day, but only if they bring proof when they voted the following day. Um, I agree with Bernie Sanders where election day should be a holiday. Should just be a total national Everyone bank shows holiday. To- yeah. I think, um, that would definitely be, and, and I mean, even, I guess you can, uh, apply it to early voting as well. I think you should just be able and from the time span of early voting to, the general election you should just pick a day and that's my day off and i'm gonna vote Mm -hmm. so i don't know do you agree yeah i agree uh the paid thing like uh i i guess that's that goes to a business's discretion but if it's a holiday then and it's like a federally funded or federally mandated time off day Mm kind of like thanksgiving or christmas or whatever then yeah i'm about it I think pe- more people should vote. What was the percentage this year for the president? Well, I guess this presidential election kind of screwed all of that up because mm-hmm. like it was the lowest turnout ever. What? Or something was like that it? for I, president? I didn't. I didn't think so. I thought it was because it was more. I mean, I figured with Trump. I mean, I. I would That's what I'm saying. I figured with Trump and yeah. Hillary, it'd be way down. But I mean, well, 2020 should. I think uh, people are projecting to see a lot more turnout because because so many Trump people got be, pissed at yeah exactly Trumping president. I don't exactly. know exactly so. Well, I'm uh, about it. Yeah, bring it on. Cole, you got any opinions or thoughts on that? Uh, Nope, I agree. It should be a holiday, and okay. we should all vote. Okay. Um, ooh, this is kind of fun. Uh, we can solve riots by releasing hundreds of dogs into the crowd, not attack dogs. Just regular puppies and dogs and... Uh, all the cuteness. No, no. What? Why? Because no. look be at it. Look at it from a logistical standpoint. That maybe, but look at it from a logistic standpoint. Like some, once you release, first of all, you have to get all these little pup cute dogs and together, hundreds of them, right? Okay, sure. You have to find the right riot. One, not a lot of fire, because then dogs will just freak out and run everywhere. Which True. puppies will already freak out anyway. So <laughs> you know, and then you have to get them all back, mm. like. These do you think people it's a riot, so if people are stealing TVs, they'll definitely steal a puppy. So I mean, but is that a bad thing? Because if they're rioting and they're angry and then they get a dog, I I, would I think hope... the people that would riot are the people that shouldn't have dogs. Oh, you think so? Those are the people that you see on like the ASPCA commercials getting like like tossed away. Like the oh, same people Michael yeah. Vick hang, hung out with. Yeah. I probably. think that's that's who I see that would hurt dogs. What about what about people like... that don't care about human life and well, a riot animal... don't care about what animal would you release then? Hyenas, dude. What? Get everyone no. back in their houses. What? Are you Stop kidding? rioting. Are you Hyenas kidding or just like a stampede of wildebeest to just Fire run ants. through the street. Fire. <laughs> that <laughs> would be. You might have to wait a while, but. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're coming. No, just <laughs> airdrop a fire ant pile. Just uh, drop them. No, I, I, I mean, that's a definitely effective. Uh, I can attest to uh, being, um, I guess, immobilized and. Uh, out down for the count by after stepping in a fire ant pile you're, as a kid so. when you're playing outside with water guns or whatever mm-hmm. and you just kind of look down you see that there's like yep. 10 of them on your leg mm-hmm. that'll ruin your whole weekend pretty much that's that's the day's gone you have to go day's in your room gone. you have to cry a little bit <laughs> yep. uh apply some ointment who knows 
I um, used to be severely allergic to fire ants where I would get a single bite mm -hmm. and I, I would know instantly that I got it. And my, like, if I got it on my foot, my entire foot and half my leg would swell up and I would be limping for like two weeks. <laughs> that's not, bad. That's, that's not, not funny. funny. Yeah, but yeah, but it, I'm sorry. Yeah. My condolences. <laughs> yeah. I, I was lucky. Um, there was actually a kid, now they bring about bugs. There was a kid, I remember, uh, in elementary school, and he was a pretty rambunctious, loud, and wild child. Uh, very mm. similar to me, but more, I think, um, less socially aware of cues and stuff like that. So huh. um, I remember one time he was, you know, we, you know, you had the playground and everything, and so you're just chilling and talking about whatever, the, the latest Pokemon and the Yu-Gi-Oh cards, and as, as you, you do. do. Um, and so I see this kid... Uh, running around the playground, like screaming, like legit screaming. And at first, you're like, "Oh, you know, he's you know, what's being silly? What, what a goofball!" Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> um, come to find out, he didn't show up to school the next week. Um, a bee stung him, like oh. in his face. Oh, yeah. Was he allergic? I because he, he was gone for like probably a solid three days. So. Then he had to have been allergic because if yeah. it's a bee stings you in your face, it's gonna hurt for a yeah. couple hours. But you're going back to school. I yeah. He was just it was it was so it was such a weird thing because like you you see him and then you just life moves on and, and then gone. he's like I'm back and you're like what you left you, what what happened <laughs> you got stung in the face um yeah no but that's I'm I'm lucky I didn't I wasn't really allergic to anything any no, outside never bugs up. or anything mm -mm. um if you're an organ donor your funeral should be free depends on who pays for it who's gonna pay for that funeral services can just cut the cost or something or like they they they, they fund it i don't know no. i think i don't I'm get th the correlation well because if you're if you're not letting your because if you One don't my old gro broken down organs is gonna go to somebody well right? i mean who knows there uh you still have uh valid plasma and blood and stuff like that and um whatever else they can harvest from your body so sure I mean, if I don't know I why would, it should be free though. Well, okay, so then if not free, then what about like at a discount or something? So like you give up a kidney and you give up a lung or something, and I think you should do. I think if you're, I think if you're alive, like you should get your funeral free and you like give an organ. But if you're dead, what does it matter? Like, congrats, you put you checked off organ donor at the DMV. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Now what? You're dead. It's not like it matters. Well, I mean, it, it, it you're passing or reducing the burden for your family. Or whoever has to bury you, unfortunately. So then, I mean, because have, have you seen? Well, then do like, it when you're alive. When well, okay, it, when it on, matters, hold on, hold when on. you have healthy organs. Hold on. Not Blake, when you're do you, dead. Do you understand how much of a uh, like monopoly people have? Funeral homes have. Oh, I know. Obituary okay. business is what I should have gotten into <laughs> for sure. It's like there's a crazy amount. Yeah, of, everyone's dying. Everyone's going to die. Oh well, no, it's no, a, no, not even, not even just the velocity of your, uh, I guess, product you're trying to push out, uh -huh. but it's the prices. It's like they, sure. they, they, they super like for something that goes into the ground and then will probably decompose. Maybe, yeah. Um, they charge you like an arm and a leg for that kind of stuff. Oh, I know. So if you're an organ donor, then shouldn't you get some kind of discount? I think it should go to veterans. I think your funeral should be free if you were a veteran mm -hmm. or if you actually gave up an organ when you were living. That's what that's because okay. I think that's when you're truly making a sacrifice. You're not sacrificing dick when you're a cold body on a table okay. with some drunk medical student trying to dig out your pancreas. <laughs> okay, Louie. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> Wait for you to catch on. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Um, no, I guess that's true. Uh so then, so then, I guess rephrase it to say, if you, d depending on how many times you've donated blood, plasma, um, bone marrow, I think sperm. you can do that. Sperm. <laughs> I mean, I well, then mine's free now. <laughs> <laughs> um, that that would be good. Uh, Bear Grylls shows. Uh, it's a Bear Grylls show where he learns survival techniques for living on the streets from homeless people. <laughs> That'd be a good show. Let me show you how to roast a pigeon. <laughs> uh, don't I, you want to take off the feathers? Was, nah, 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 nah. You don't need to do that. I feel like that'd be a show on TLC. That's definitely like a show you could... <laughs> in, uh, next up, after my strange addiction, Bear Grylls on the street. <laughs> or something like that. Um, I'd watch it. Cole, would you watch it? Uh, Yeah, I I'd watch it. Blake, would you? Would no. You, why? Cause that's, that's, I don't. I don't understand. Like, so one, how how great are homeless people at surviving on the streets? Mm -hmm. 
like I'm, I mean they're like pretty how? good I, if they're if they're alive. <laughs> I, you, like, I mean, if, I, I the streets are seem easy enough to easier to survive really? on than living out in nature. Yeah, really, of course, really, no, no doubt. With the streets, there's like disease and trash and crap. Uh, and when you're sleeping, <laughs> you have a chance of being robbed by other homeless people. Very true. Uh, if you you could you have you're more likely to get hit in an accident. That's for True. sure. Either so run let me over ask, let me ask you a question: or killed, or um, are we about to go through someone... the plight of every single homeless person ever? Yes, I understand it's difficult. <laughs> like I, I completely understand it's difficult. Sure. But to be thrown into a mosquito-infested rainforest, try to make a whoa, fire, whoa, you and just the said only a food... forest, not a rainforest, huh? So you said I thought originally this is like you take your out... pick. Any any well, atmosphere a forest would be way easier than a rainforest. You're right. It's still harder than living on the streets, for sure. No uh, doubt. I feel. I feel like because I think once you get the the routine through with what you're doing with survival <laughs> about like where you're getting your food, as long as you know where you're sleeping and where you can get food, and if you have a source of water, I think it'd be easier. Initially, I think I, I'll give it initially when you're the culture shock from living in a city to the wild. If you're homeless and you have nothing, you need to get out more, dude. No, dude. Seriously, I think. Cities are dangerous, man. I'm just saying. Cities are dangerous. Mother Cole, Nature Cole, back me versus up. a city. Give me the city every single day. I would th- I would not only would I live, I would thrive in the in city. The city? Oh, well then yeah. what's your what's your game plan, Blake? My game plan is yeah. to get a fucking job. Okay, how Problem are you gonna solved. if you're homeless, how are you gonna get a job? There are plenty of shelters that will give me a haircut, food, warm clothes, nice clothes to go to a job interview, and you start working your way up. Yeah, but what happened? No where, where are you going to send your bill or uh, your checks and stuff like that? What checks? You like to your pays. Your you have to 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 have a bank account. You have to have a home address. Uh, I don't think you can do a Very PO true. box. Yeah, I'd have um, to start with the check casting places for sure. That would be that would be something difficult that I'd have to do. I have to start with just casting my checks and buying can stuff. You, can, that well, I need. Can, well, will they even like? Will they even hire you if you don't have a physical? Well, I, I maybe maybe if you're. Okay, so if you have a job, can you list a PO box for your? Because like they have ta- filing taxes and stuff like that, and there's a bunch of government stuff that mm-hmm. I'd have to start. I'd have to start somewhere, but I'm not. I'm not just gonna delve into the sewers, and I I have more pride than that. Mm-hmm. See, I think we're really going off the point here. Is it easier to survive in the forest or just any literally any part of nature, any atmosphere? Okay, no doubt in my mind, it's harder. To survive in nature, Mother Nature, the thing that if it wanted to could wipe us out right now with a big ass tornado versus mm. a city. Come on, dude. Come on. You need to go hunting with me or something. I mean, I'd be down. That'd be that'd be fun. Either way, we just can piss. Right? <laughs> well, no, I said there's a for- there's a there's a source of water somewhere. So and I mean if you have to drink I mean homeless people probably drink their pee. I'm I'm full I in, where is where is a clean water source in like a, a highly populated city? Where's like a lake in a city? There is well, none. A lake isn't clean water source. I mean, so that's another be... thing that you'd have to figure out in the wild is clean water. In I the mean, city, I can go to anywhere anywhere that's running water. I can get a free <sighs> cup of water at McDonald's. Oh, that's true. That's very true. You could just live at McDonald's. You could. you could just live in the bathroom. Ew. You could just take a stall, and I'm just saying, man, if you have to stay at the night somewhere, might as well stay at a McDonald's. Because you're absolutely open right. Twenty four seven. Um, quiet restaurants, like a normal restaurant, but you can't talk out loud. There's no music, and you can't bring your kids. Go no. to a deaf restaurant. Is that a thing? Is that a, yeah? Are deaf restaurants. A yeah, thing? There, there's restaurants owned by deaf people, and you you can go there and not be deaf, but because mm-hmm. the atmosphere is already like um, the waitresses, the waiters, the staff, etc., are all deaf mm-hmm. for the most part. Um, there's not a lot of talking, and because people go in and don't see talking, they mm-hmm. also continue not to talk, and thus mm-hmm. it's just quiet. Hmm. I didn't know that was a thing. Is that just like in the? Because I, I I don't I wouldn't find that in somewhere residential. I know there's a place like that in Austin. Oh really? Okay. Well, Austin's super forward thinking and fancy, and they have uh, like a, a super fancy behind. school for the deaf here in Austin. Do they really? Yeah. Like, do we have a school for the deaf? I don't know. I bet there's probably some institutes you could find that would be like pro deaf people. 
Um, That's a weird statement. I just I don't know, man. <laughs> who's that, against I, death? Who's against death? No, people? no, no, no. But I mean, like the accessibility and stuff like that is very limited because we. I feel I feel like we probably take advantage of our sight and sound. Right, and, but because this is this goes to like you know how how much should our whole society change for a very small percentage of the population kind of kind of scenario mm-hmm. you know like am i going to have to a lot we should change everything we should change everything I about mean, dallas yes. to no <clears throat> get no. rid of stairs just <laughs> <laughs> just what does in that Dallas, have to do? just demolition of all the stairs, escalator oh God, stairs. Yeah. Could you imagine? Elevators it? could stay, but uh, no, nah. I'd, I'd be down. No, you wouldn't. <laughs> You're such a liar. Okay, here's a good one. Uh, crazy idea: punch a goose and run. <laughs> <laughs> I'm telling you, dude. I've seen I've seen geese choke out a kid at a park before, dude. I think geese should be on the FBI's most wanted. They Wait, should. What? We should build a wall between us and Canada just to keep out the goddamn geese. Geese aren't that dangerous, are they? <laughs> yes. Geese are they're dangerous. not dangerous. They're just fucking dicks, man. Really? Oh yeah, they, they're horrible they birds. They'll oh. go up and beat up a child for sure. Really? Oh yeah. Like, Have you not seen? It? I'll show you wait, a video. Well, right like, after are they this. being provoked or like? Sometimes they... no. I'll show you a video right now of this guy getting in his fishing boat with his dog, mm-hmm. and a goose comes out of nowhere and just starts attacking the dog. And the guy will grab the goose by its neck and throw it back in the water. And like ten times, this goose gets back into the boat and tries to like bite this dog until finally he just like drives the boat away. And he then pans back, and the goose is like flying level with the water, just trying to catch up to the boat. That's they're vindictive scary. little dicks, dude. Are there any other birds like that, or is go- mockingbirds are- with other animals? Really? Are, yeah, hmm. mockingbirds. I'm sure eagles and falcons. I'm sure don't take chickens can be mean. Chickens can be mean. Oh yeah, the, the, yeah roosters male chicken like super- roosters can are very orny. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Here, check. Picture I just linked. Oh, okay. Hold on. <laughs> Is it... Got a picture. Oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll throw I'll throw up the picture. Uh, yeah, that's that's about right. Geese are not that poor man. He's just he's just like trying to <laughs> run away and. It's <laughs> about right. Um, I hate geese. they hiss also. Yeah, they, they do. hiss. <laughs> that's not. That ooh, They're what not... if you're you're just like walking walking at a park or something and you're minding your own business yes. and you just hear. <laughs> they're they're like gangs in the streets. When I used to go fishing with my grandpa, they'd be all huddled together and just kind of follow us hissing. And if uh-huh. you look at them the wrong way, they like get into attack pose. They're okay, frightening. I take it back. I don't want to be in the nature. I don't. Oh, you sure? Because <laughs> a goose could mess you up. I mean, I don't know, man. Um, no. politicians should wear sponsored logos on their clothes, so we all know who's paying them and have their best interests at heart. Yeah. Like lobbyists or just like straight up politicians? Just any, any, I guess any kind of PACs or any kind of money that they take from anybody. Like NASCAR. Essentially NASCAR for sponsorships, but like with... uh, Like today's Senate yeah, hearing sure. run by, you know, no, no, Diane no, 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 I think no, 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 sponsored no, no, by Planned Parenthood and she has like a sticker on her back or something like that. Oh, I was thinking more just like a patch or something. So just like, so you have a suit or something like that. And, and you then, have to sew on a patch. Or whatever. And then you just have like all of your... Uh, oh, like a Girl Scout with their buttons or something? Or, yeah, even something like that. that just a sash. NRA here and like Mountain but it has Dew to be... there. And... <laughs> if Mountain Dew is sponsoring a politician, that'd be amazing. <laughs> um, Big Pharma. Like, right I don't know. There. I feel I feel like that'd be... Because they're, cause they're like... Um, I was actually... So, quick quick tangent. So, voted today. Um, and I was... As I was going through uh, the line, I was just kind of doing a quick research on like the governor and whatever and whoever and the attorney general and... Uh, just kind of the quick stances and stuff like that of like, okay, do I really want a Republican incumbent or should I vote for the Democrat? Mm-hmm. And so um, a lot of people like, uh, I think it was, I, I think it was the attorney general. I, I can't quote me on this, but um, one of them apparently as a current incumbent, uh, he has like a pay, he's like got a fine or something like that because he broke, he's like had a third degree felony and he got out of it somehow by paying thousands and thousands of dollars or some shit like that. Well, what and was the felony? Because that, I, that matters. I, I think I think it was I think degree... it was something with like immigration or some. I, I don't remember. Because well, you also know that like THC oil in Texas, oh, even sure. having it is a class C is felony. It, right. So like that. Well, no, but I mean, but it's still it's just that I feel I feel like uh, bringing forward 
um, you know, if, all, if you I have think, any kind yeah, of all of their information should be public. Mm -hmm. They're they're voted on by us. We pay them to do this job. All of their shit should be public, not their private family stuff. Of course mm -hmm. not. But any sponsorships, absolutely. I I'm on board with that. Okay, Cole, you you agree or you don't care? I agree. Okay. That'd be, that'd be cool. <laughs> Um, if your coworker doesn't show up to work, leaving you to work by yourself, whatever pay he was supposed to get for that day gets added to yours. Uh, no. Why? I think that's fair. Depends on the context. So what if, what if they're just a no call, no show? But what if they died? No. Well, okay. That's different. I mean, I think that's a little extreme, Cole. No. Why? If you, if you, well, if, you okay, if you're, question so, okay, is, hold on, hold on. So you just an hourly, hourly. So this worker. is hourly only. This sure. is not commission based. This is not salary based. This okay, is then yeah, let's, let's keep it strictly hourly. Okay. I, I understand. And salary I have to cut. So everything. somebody doesn't show up at like say I'm a cash register, or I'm mm -hmm. cashier. Mm -hmm. Somebody doesn't show up for their cashier's job that's mm -hmm. supposed to be next to me. Or or if and I take all the orders, I should get the amount of hours that they should get paid. No. Or well, what if what it. if what if it's like my job? I mean, my job is to. I think that would help because then that would incentivize because instead of then complaining and uh, having a really like uh, putting yourself in a bad mood for having to cover somebody, then you're like, OK, well, at least I'm getting compensated a little. No, more. because the work you do has very little to do with the work itself. What if it's half their pay? No. Any pay? No. You should not. Compensated Absolutely at all. not. Really? No. Why? What? What you did you do to earn that money? Besides you, doing your job that you get paid you to do. You were put into a situation. Because think about it. A, a business, let's say I'm a store manager. I'm sure. an owner of whatever restaurant. Yeah. I already pay you. I value you at $11 an hour. Mm -hmm. You press buttons on a machine and mm -hmm. you tell people what to cook. Right. You are, I, for some reason, I value you at $11 an mm -hmm. hour. Okay. Some person doesn't show up and you are, all you have to do is just keep pressing buttons yeah but okay? the, that's your but value to me okay. that's what you're supposed mm -hmm. to do that's what i pay sure. you to do yeah and you have to do just that more like mm -hmm. you can only do your productivity can only go up so much i don't think you're that's not true. that's complete yes yeah, so no if you okay so let's say so there let's, are limits to everybody's productivity are what are you, what are you doing i'm just ripping there are limits to everybody's productivity you're not doing twice what your productivity is worth because one person doesn't show up it that's may not, not be a directly twice, but let's say you have a volume of, let's say, in in one hour you service a uh, hundred people, mm -hmm. whether it's retail, uh, fast food, whatever it is. So you you service a hundred people in an hour. Um, if you have two people, then the combined total will be able to service two hundred people in an hour. So uh, let's. I'm not trying to get super deep into it, but but um, let's say so. Let's just say 150. Is yeah, that you serve. So you service 150 because you do have the influx. Because let's say it's afternoon time and people are getting off their jobs and then they're going to you know uh patron your establishment so one the hourly person's not getting paid either way because if it's a no call no show or whatever then i assume that they're not going to get paid for that they didn't work the hours mm -hmm. so let's say you get you're going to work 10 hours and you get paid 10 dollars an hour so it's 100 dollars for this one person so you could at least take a portion that you're not paying that person and if you maintain so if if he if where is that money coming from not being paid to the person, to the person who didn't show up. The hundred dollars that didn't show up, you can at least allocate. Okay, like now, but th maybe this isn't hourly. Now this is commission based. No, 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 That's no, 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 no. Hour, it, hourly. No, it's not because it, where's that money coming from, you've all? So okay, so you have okay. I have guys paying for a sandwich. A hundred right. people pay for sandwiches. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you, you make now it's one hundred fifty people pay for sandwiches mm -hmm. because that person isn't there. Which one that. Knowing we've worked in restaurants before, that's not really how that goes. You can only take orders so fast, right? It's not like no, you can. I think I think management. I think management can. You, I th no, that's because not, because if it, but yeah, but you're not even getting half of that. You're not. If you are, then you're then you're. I'm sorry, Cole. If you are, then your customer <laughs> service is not being as good as it could be. That's and, not necessarily true. I think you can oh be. My gosh, I think you can be work fast, efficient, and the management. Can then crack you're down absolutely the whip. right. You're absolutely so. Hold on to that. Okay, sure. You should be doing that every time then. That's what you're truly worth then. Mm -hmm. So why do I have to pay you for somebody else when you because should be doing that every just, single time? Because that's the structure of uh, company's efficiency. No, no, no company would be working at 100 percent efficiency. So you're right. So why do I? So if you're not doing that for because me, it's a why human should I pay thing. you 100 percent of somebody else's work? It's a human because we're all work? humans and we all Get deserve the fuck out of here. to. We okay. all just, this is the same I thing. see where this conversation went. Blake went. doesn't value people, and he thinks everyone should uh, fall under his boots. <laughs> <laughs> now come on i just 
I think I don't know, man. I, you the older you, the older I get, the softer I get, and the more lenient I. Obviously, freeloaders suck, but like, I don't know, man. I think I think if your employee is showing their value and is re- is you know absolutely. taking up give the, them a raise, the absolutely, absolutely give them a raise. If okay, they keep give them that a long term, give them a long term raise. Yeah. But I don't think there's nothing wrong with giving them a short term. Hey, here's a twenty dollar bonus for working tonight because there was a less a less help or whatever. I don't think that's crazy at all. That's well, fine. Blake I do. It's crazy. That's why we're on crazy ideas. <laughs> <laughs> Cole, what do you think? Uh, I think I've only ever worked freelance and contract stuff, so I have no opinion. Yeah, because I've never had a coworker. <laughs> no, that's literally because no, 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 no. I mean, if we're looking at freelance and stuff like that, then if let's say uh, Cole does is a, you know a super famous artist or whatever, and there's another super famous artist. Then you know someone's gonna that super famous artist doesn't show up for work, and then Cole does no, even more there's, super there's famous a, artistry. No. He should get more no. of what they super. No, there's, super let's say there's let's say work. there's a potential job or something like that, or someone's looking. The city of Austin wants to commission somebody to paint a mural or whatever. Mm-hmm. So then it's ultimately you know either he he's gonna he's gonna get paid for it, or he's not gonna get paid for it, and so he has to combat with other artists and stuff like that so when they don't ultimately get paid cole's getting paid yeah it's competition right that's how it works right but you should still i mean it's you should still like at least it add a little more incentive i think i don't know i that's I, not a business that's not what a business you know what sometimes job is sometimes that's create incentive that yeah, is a bi- what are you talking about at the, at the very have- at the ba- at the basic level, a mm-hmm. business's job is to make money. Yes. I incentive agree. comes from managers incentivizing their employees, you know, more mm-hmm. money, mm-hmm. you know, all that stuff, which a business, therefore, you know, they it's a balancing act. Mm-hmm. If because you did a good job today and you serviced more people, you therefore get more of my money because of one day as a business owner, you did one day. If this happened regularly, okay. that's when you get raises. You do a good job. And yeah, but people there, notice there that. Should, I think we're and talk, also we're that employee, in and asshole, that employee should get fired, mm-hmm. so that never happens again. That's why they have three strike rules. Because at a certain time, you're not worth the amount that I'm paying you. I think there should be more leniency. Okay. Next um, idea. Um, an app that lets you invite an anonymous person to act as a neutral third party when having an argument. Absolutely not. What? What the heck? So you don't want a third person to tell me that I'm right and you're wrong, Blake, in this <laughs> argument? That's what Cole is here for? Uh, Cole, are you? But no, Cole. Cole is will always. Agree so that's with just me a forever. random person that's going to listen to me talk to you about mm. something about this, and mm. they're going to at the very end say you've always right or Blake was right. Who the I fuck are you? Provided you're a random person. What if your, IQ, what if your IQ is seventy and they can't even execute you? Well, you're obviously so we like, have a barrier I, to entry. Oh, we, so we it's, we an, it's, an qualific- it's application process, I mean, right? Is that already a thing in is law? What, what for, like arbitration and stuff? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. Make, make an app for arb- arb- arbiter, the arbiter. Yeah, in Halo. I mean, for just a dumbass conversation that we're having about who's better, Israeli commandos or Navy SEALs, some <laughs> random person is going to sit down and say, "Hmm, interesting." Now, Blake, let's hear your side. Hmm, interesting. And now the whoever quote unquote wins that argument is what some random fucking dude who very <laughs> who we don't know could have just killed somebody 30 minutes before this conversation even happened like we don't know who is sitting down here i mean well that's the roll of the dice <laughs> <laughs> you gotta risk it for the biscuit baby okay um oh this one's fun uh this hopefully is less controversial public toilets that weigh your poop and you can show a scoreboard for competition <laughs> Down. That would be amazing. That would be amazing. I would There's actually know. Journals that have like names. Yeah. Like, so uh, just add that to toilets and boom. that would be you really intimidating. Like yeah, yeah. You'd walk. You'd walk into like a random mall bathroom and you just see like thirteen pounds. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Someone went to payway. Golly! All right. They're, they're, the oh my god the mall can like build a challenge or something we're like all right so you need to hit payway then you hit the cinnabon then you go back for all right and then the combination here this will totally rack up your points man this will get you the high oh, score so gross i just don't know how logistically that would work like a toilet that weighs your poo you probably you could no here's how you do it 
So you'd uh, have to make a waterproof device, uh, put it inside the toilet that would be able to measure the volume, and then when you make the business, then it would measure the volume uh, disparity, and then uh, do whatever so mathematical like a thing. Yeah, or no, well, not 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 a buoyancy, just Density the the thing? the volume the. Because I know that from the change in volume, you can uh, you, you can, can measure mass and stuff, and then from there you right. can extrapolate weight or whatever. So, okay, I mean, well then, but somebody with a lot of diarrhea then wouldn't like their poo just oh, it may true. be as much poo, but see, it's it's all on first it's all on first impact. It's Ew, the first no. first first thing that drops. What? That's that's your score. No, that's the, because that's everyone the only pees thing? first, so it's just no. Nah, then you ha- you can't pee. You're not allowed to pee. What? <laughs> you have no. to use the urinal. You That's have to use the urinal, that... and, then, and, then and, then you, and then you go to the toilet. That's ridiculous. Not everyone's think... going to do that. You know what? That is a crazy idea. <laughs> I like the idea, though. I really do. Like, in theory. <laughs> um... God, it's <just> ridiculous. <laughs> uh, okay. After a government shutdown, all active members of Congress should be ineligible for re-election. I think Where that's really that? smart. After a government shutdown, all active members of Congress Repeat should be... Repeat that. After after a government shutdown, all active members of Congress should be ineligible for re-election. Why? Because they made the government shut down. Why does the government shut they down? They didn't do their job because efficiently. The, the, essentially, yeah, they didn't. The, uh, the, the times when governments would shut down is if they can't find a, a budget, mm-hmm. a balancing budget. I'm sure there's other security measures in place for government shutdown. Um, I just know in recent years that the Republicans are always the one that threatens government shutdowns. So. Um, yeah, like every single time, or not every single time, like from my memory, the last couple of times when there have been an imminent, oh my God, the government might shut down, is because Republicans are holding out for budgets. Mm-mm. I mean, the we can fact check this. The government didn't. Um... No, I know the government The government hasn't shut down in however many months or years or whatever, but I remember specifically in high school. Um, yeah, I like, remember when it shut down then. Yeah. I, I don't know in about 2013. recently. 2013. Right, but 2013, or was that 2013 or 14? 2013. 2013, okay. Um, but I know Republicans have threatened for government shutdown. Um, but you you shut down the government and lots of people lose their pensions. And that was because of uh, immigration reform, I think, in 2013. The no, I'm pretty sure it was the budget. It's always the budget. No, I, I understand. Oh, okay. Yeah, it was oh, part sure. of that. And the, the Republicans thought that there was to go, too much money going towards uh, immigration. immigration. Okay, that makes sense. Um, yeah, no, that's fair. Because then that would, that would incentivize politicians to make sure that they play nice and... They don't ruin their careers. Mm. That'd be crazy, though. Like, freaking sixty spots are up for re-election and no incumbents. Ooh. Yeah, we should. You know what? We should just have like every twenty years, we should just flush out government, just flush out everyone working in the government, and just do something else. I agree. There are people in their mid eighties that are in the government, mm-hmm. and I can tell you right now, having grandparents, there should not be anybody <laughs> eighty five or older. In the government, absolutely not. I would say the cu- cutoff should be like maybe sixty. No, because there are brilliant people that are above sixty. I mean, you can be a sure. brilliant person and like advise to the government, but actual like. But why? Why does okay? So then, well, just act, day-to-day logistics and operations within the government. I think you know you the the more youthful, spry, more with it, hip people should uh, be there, and then whoever. Whoever else uh, above the age wants to um, add any kind of additional information or provide insight or whatever can totally can do that. But um, I mean, I don't know. I just think that'd be fair. Every I would say then every 30 years, every 30 years, just flush out the government and just new people. Is 30 years enough time to institute change in policy and do enough with your life? Yes, I think so. Okay. Because, uh, I mean, what, what was that? The... Uh, Teddy Roosevelt's hundred days or whatever, hundred first hundred days was like super massive reform and change, and mm-hmm. there was a all. I would of, also, th- I think it'd be curious to see what his Senate looked like, what his House of Representatives looked like, true, what his true, you know. See, oh, I'm sure the the I'm makeup sure of be, all that would have just totally different now, but well, no, I'm saying not even the makeup, like just how much majority or minority. Oh, he sure, had yeah. In order to create that kind of change, because I don't think that Teddy Roosevelt was throwing out executive orders like the last two presidents have been. Oh, uh, that's true. Yeah, that's that's it. Because and that's so stupid. How it's just we're so divided, and it's like it, for any because then it's like. You, you inch a couple ways this way, and then when the next president comes in, and then you have to work back the other way. And then the next president comes in, and ah, it works, and it's just a back and forth, and we're just w- within the first 10 feet of where we should be going. 
because uh, we keep going in different directions. Mm-hmm. Um, that's, that's 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 how this government was designed to be. This government was mm-hmm. designed for gridlock. Oh well, like I mean, back way mm-hmm. back in 1783 or 1787, mm-hmm. like this government was designed for gridlock. Yeah, that's how it is. It's it's designed for fiery debate and a slow moving process to make positively sure mm-hmm. this is what we want to do. Oh no, I, I I agree, and I mean, uh, I I don't know if we've had this conversation before, Blake, about the one one of kind of the core uh, identities of government, along along with gridlock and uh, s- slow progress, um, is essentially you know we we should start looking more of the government as just a means to prevent. Uh, massive genocide mm-hmm. and uh, prevent means to uh, dictators. I think. I think really at its core, sure you can regulate the economy and sure you can do this and sure well, you can. Institute... might be a libertarian. Well, now. no, I mean I'm not that? saying that's the only thing they should do. I'm just saying like at, it, at, the, at, at its, its core, core, it should you know, keep Hitler us. Hitler will never rise at in America. That that um, I, I think that's Trump. Like, that's get on the train, you all <laughs> right, libtard. <laughs> God, I'm such a cuck. Um. Okay, so last one, Next. and and we 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 already kind of talked about it, but I wanted to expand a little more <laughs> on this. So, uh, private prisons should be paid by how long former inmates stay out of jail after they serve their full sentence. Um, I think this is great. I think there's, uh, I don't think this is a crazy crazy idea at all. I don't know the logistics of it. I like, I guess people would like report every month or something. Say, hey, I'm not in prison any or still or whatever, and then um, see. I think you're still. You're causing somebody to like if for the goal is full rehabilitation, mm-hmm. then why I I don't th- I think it'd be counterintuitive to make them check in like it's a probation officer after because no. that's basically probation is having mm-hmm. to check in every month after you get out of prison. Well, so then so then we'll we'll just put that we'll put the responsibility on the prisons. So we'll just I we'll, think it should we'll, just be a records thing. Yeah, if and this just, person gets back into the system, then. You know, you lose your cut or something. So, okay. So it would be, we could do it where it's like every, every six months, uh, in a, a rehabilitated inmate, um, is out of prison every six months, you get like a thousand dollars or something, you know, arbitrary of, uh, what fitting the bill is the only thing I'm confused about. I mean, how are private prisons making money now? I'm guessing by private citizens or private corporations pumping in money. Sure. And so then we just have the... So we just make these private people, these private citizens and private organizations... I mean, if we we want... by this rule? Because... And here's where government's going to step into play. Um, Because if government regulates that, then uh, we can hopefully... I mean, it's probably not going to happen because of all of the lobbyists and crazy crap that's already in place that (laughs) impedes any kind of social progress ever. But... Um, <laughs> hot sports opinion, I guess. Yeah, right. Um, no, it's just it's it's really sad. Uh, there's I'll I'll have to show you. Uh, there's a uh, Adam ruins everything. I I think I probably showed you a couple mm-hmm. sc- scenes or whatever. Cole, you familiar with Adam ruins everything? Uh, you've mentioned him. Okay, I yeah. have yet to check him out. But yeah. so uh, so he they just put his first season of his show mm-hmm. on, on Netflix. Netflix, and so there's one where they talk about the prison system, and it's it's genuinely disheartening just the amount of uh, repeat offenders and just how broken the system is where you know they don't see you as an inmate they see you as cash and so i think they structure their uh, prison system based on that like isolation stuff or whatever the 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 whatever isolation chambers that they put inmates mm-hmm. in that's like been has been discredited and like labeled as inhumane torture and all sorts of crazy stuff because people can legit go insane from that um God knows I probably would. I just like in a small little bathroom sized room with nothing but my thoughts. Whew. Whew. <laughs> What's your heart? How do you sleep? I, I don't I don't know. On the floor? Do you get a bed while you're in isolation? I'm talking about you. Oh me? Now. Oh no. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's that's that that's when I uh that's when I call you Blake and I just start being mean to you and then I feel better about myself. So as long as I can uh push off the Never mind. Um. Anyways. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. All right. L- l- I I lied. This is one where I just because this is funny. Uh, an R-rated animated Scooby Doo movie where people actually get brutally killed and Shaggy tells Fred to go f himself. 
I think that'd be, I would pay for that. Honestly, if there was like, hey, we're crowdfunding this movie and it's going to be an animated Scooby-Doo art movie. Totally The whole down. time they're all just stoned. Fred yeah. and Daphne go off to fuck somewhere in one of the rooms. I mean, rooms. did you guys see the live action movies they did I in the them. early 2000s? I, I remember <laughs> one of them barely and I just, I remember Scrappy was really yeah, scary Sco- or like no, weird or island. creeped yeah. me out. Mm-hmm. It's Scrappy, yeah. just this 3D character model or whatever. Yeah. It was just, I, I mean, enjoyed those that, movies. That, that was a stoner, like the, at least the first movie was a stoner comedy, for like, sure, straight up. For was sure, it, really? it was a sex oh, and stoner yeah. comedy, but with the actual explicit content removed, but still hinted at. You know, yeah, like, I, like they switched their bodies in the first. Like, I would have I, Fred on, does is yeah. check out his boobies, Daphne's tits. Yeah, I would. Ha- I would have to rewatch because I don't remember. I any love of, it. I'm, it's <laughs> like it's like kind of like one of the just old SpongeBob episodes where you just rewatch it and you're like, oh. I'll get them from movie trading company That's and we can watch them. Bikini bottom mean. Yeah. And if you it. want like an actual scary Scooby Doo movie, mm-hmm. Zombie Island. It was their first home video one of like uh I don't even know what years. I think it was in ninety. Um Scooby Doo on Zombie Island. That's like that's said. the legitimate legit- the one where they're in Louisiana Scooby-Doo and Shaggy yes. and uh, Scooby eat those pipe peppers and they have to run to the lake and put their face in. Then when they look up, yeah. oh, dude, that one legitimately scared me as a kid. I love that it's one. It's frightening. That sounds... I I just remember yeah. old school Scooby-Doo and then what's new Scooby-Doo. That's are my good memories. I don't need to hear any scary yeah. stuff about what's new Scooby-Doo. That was such a good... It's such, The newer ones are, I from what I remember, not that great, but the what's new Scooby-Doo was awesome. The theme song was great. I'll sing oh the gosh. theme song forever. No. I'll get that stuck in your head instead of Rush. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, so okay, that, that was it. Um, I don't know. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, I I definitely liked seeing all these different kinds of ideas. Oh yeah, and uh, it makes me makes me feel good about myself knowing that I'm not the only weird person coming up with just <laughs> stupid ideas. Um, but yeah, so uh, if you got any crazy ideas or if you have uh, anything, thoughts or opinions on anything that we went over today, uh, definitely give us a little comment down in the doobly doo. Uh, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, Cole uh, got some stuff to plug or anything like that. Uh, I did an Eminem album review on yeah. the channel. If you haven't watched it, please watch it so I can get off my butt and make more. Yeah. See, um, Cole has to hit 300 views before he is committed to make another one. So get yeah. him to 300. And maybe let me know what kind of stuff you want me to review. Yeah, that's true. Um, Because, uh, Cole, you were saying you were wanting to do more, not just music, but also uh, art and stuff like that, correct? Or no? I'm down to review anything that catches my interest, movies, music, art, video games, mm. whatever. Um, but I'm open to suggestions because everything I'm consuming right now is like old stuff. True. All right. Cool. Well, awesome. Well, thank you guys. I appreciate you guys being on uh, another one more podcast podcast. And I uh, hope you guys have a fantastic day, night, or whenever you listen to this show.